All right, continuing our digital painting. So this is after a weekend break from it. So let's just remind ourselves how we built this. We had reference images of our subject. I'm doing a portrait from the shoulders up. And I had an inspiration image. And then I have a color palette image. Now in my folder, I have quite a few inspiration images and I might be able to rely on some of these today in different finishing techniques because digital painting doesn't just have to be my own placement of pixels. That's just how it starts. And then of course I have multiple photo references, but I already put the ones in that I thought were most useful. But I think these are interesting. Some of these other textures and they might be helpful in finishing it off. So how did we build it? Well, we started with just rough flat shapes. And I put behind that, well, we started with like a, a sketch, a very loose sketch, right? And put kind of a solid color behind that. And then rough shapes building onto that. And then we started refining the paint. And you see how that background color really helps. And then we kept refining the paint and we got to this level. And it does matter whether it's surrounded by white, makes it look a little dingy, or surrounded by gray, which helps it look a little bit more rounded. And that's just to help you choose your colors. And then we have my final refined paint, which is there. Now, if we isolate any one of those layers, that's my final refined paint. But underneath that is this. Underneath that is this. Underneath that is this, right? And when you layer them all up together, you get where my painting is so far. So it can be helpful at this point to combine everything except the background that you think is useful. So I'm going to turn off my references and I'm just going to unlock, even though this is at, at print resolution, pretty high resolution, I'm going to unlock these four layers that make up my painting. And I'm going to hold down Alt Option and say Layer Merge Layers. And what that does is it puts all of those layers into one combined layer at the top. And if any of your brushwork is less than 100% opaque, as you can see it is in little places, right? Then by making that combined layer, it will darken certain things. It will increase your contrast. But what's nice about this is now all on one layer, I can go in I'm going to lock the others. I know it's all safe. And now on this combined layer, I'll mark that maybe with a green color. And I can label it. Now I can go in and pretty boldly use my brush. And so my brush is here at the end. And then you can always ch check. That's my custom brush, which I saved in my assignment folder, you see it there, and loaded it into Photopea. I could also load it into Photoshop, but that's just the brush shape. I also wanna check the brush settings. That looks pretty good. Maybe I'll up the roundness. Okay. So let me shrink that brush a little bit. And now how do I choose colors? I just hold down the option key and it changes my brush into the eyedropper. And I can just choose colors directly. And then wherever I want to put in something a little bolder like that, I can. 
And then we also talked about the smudge tool. I'm going to set my smudge tool to be my big brush. And that's a way too strong. So I can take its strength down to less than 30. And I can just use this, man, that's strong, to push out certain edges. I'm going to move things around. So I'm going to use my brush tool. Maybe I'll use it at a about a 60% opacity. Yeah, so that when I paint, it really does merge into everything. And then, but I still want to be pretty bold. That's why I'm on a combined layer. In fact, I might take its opacity up a little bit more. And this is where I can start introducing so we're reintroducing some of my contrast back into it, some of my color choices. And I can feel safe because it's all in a combined layer. So everything's underneath as well if I need it. So I'm not hurting anything. I'm just building on top of what I have. I'm going to stretch this a little bit so that I can get a little bit more on the screen because I like that necklace. And I want to see if I can kind of frame that in pretty quickly. Not a whole lot of zooming in. But just enough. I'll get the right size on that brush. I'm gonna save it because it's starting to slow down on me a little bit. This is where I can just put in some final touches. And I'm just using a trackpad so I don't have the pressure sensitivity on the brush. So I might as well go ahead and turn that setting off within Photo P. And I'm going to use slightly bigger. Don't want it to take forever. And so these kind of seed pearl, the seed pearl necklace, these dark pearls, I'm just trying to find the negative shapes in between, get kind of the shadows right, still get some of that color variation. And of course, as you're finishing something off, you tend to be a little bit more careful than in earlier speed painting stages. And I'm still trying not to use black black, kind of mixing my black from my darkest darks that are layered. And then when I feel it gets too hard, I can always use that smudge tool. Take out an edge. Yeah. This is where a stylus can really speed you up. I've gotten okay at speed painting with the trackpad, but like the fine work is is trickier without a tablet and stylus for me. why they are a popular tool. Ah. You can always go back in your history. I shouldn't be so tentative. I can always paint with the highlight back again. 
instead of trying to get all the shadows in the right place. But I wanted to give just a little bit of detail to make everything seem more intentional. And by having my reference way over here, it makes it so I can't going to use the crutch of zooming in too much. Change my colors every once in a while. Possible, I want to make use of the variation in the texture I've already built up. To me, that's very important in digital painting, that you do build up a texture that's more interesting than just solid colored pixels. And that's why I've shown you how to customize a brush, how to layer it with different opacities. Now when I block in some of these bigger shadows, I can also use that to build some of the texture. And some colors in there. Increasing the contrast in certain areas. And then, because it's all on this combined layer, I can turn the layers on underneath. And then I can scrape it away a little bit using my eraser with my customized brush. Keep that texture at a slightly lower opacity. And I can just knock it back gently. And of course I can paint with some highlights as well. So this is all on that, that top combined layer. So little finishes. Like the trackpad is a lot like painting with a palette knife. You have to give up a certain measure of control. But it can still give you a pretty nice texture. Even missing that. Is when you try to get too picky and detailed with the digital tools, they can look really fussy. And that's why in general it's better to work with a larger brush 